What's up everybody, my name is Dwight and welcome back to GeForce Garage. Today we're going to be building a mobile VR rig that proves that you don't have to sacrifice power for portability. We set out to build a VR rig with the full power of a desktop system that we could break down, pack up, and set up anywhere within minutes. So let's take a look at the parts that we're going to be using for our mobile VR rig. So for the case, we're going to be using a Silverstone ML08, which is a slim design that separates the video card and the motherboard so they sit vertically on top of each other. We're going to be using a GTX 1080 Ti from Zotac, which is actually the small form factor, but the case does actually support a full-size video card an i7-7700K that's going to be cooled by a low-profile Noctua NH-L9i. We have 16 gigs of Corsair RAM. We have a 1 terabyte Crucial M.2 SSD. For the motherboard, we have a MSI Z270i Gaming Pro Carbon, all powered by a small form factor 600 watt power supply from Silverstone. So real quick before we build the PC, let's talk a little bit about why we're using a Pelican case, which seems a little overkill. Well, my original cardboard box that my Vive came in is actually a little beat up and it's only getting more beat up the more I take it places. So we got something that's really tough that will protect my headset and protect whatever else is in it. And we got backpack straps so we can actually carry it on our back so our two hands are free to carry our PC and our lighthouses. And speaking of the lighthouses, you can hard mount your lighthouses in the house, but a lot of people get light stands. So they can be positioned places, you can take them places. We found a set of light stands that actually come with their own carrying case and it makes it a lot easier to move them around. And just to give you guys a quick glance of how things are organized, it will carry everything nice and safe and it has pockets for all the different wires and everything else that needs to come with it and enough space for the headset, the controllers, chargers, everything. But the most convenient thing is that I can just grab it and I can go. So there you have it, the PC's all built. It actually went together a lot easier than I expected. It was probably the easiest PC that I've put together this year. I really like this case. It has a nice chambered design so the video card heat doesn't mix with the motherboard heat. So everything stays nice and cool. But uh, anyways, let's go see how well it performs. Since this is more about the performance in VR games, we'll skip our 3D Mark section and move right into the numbers. It being a compact build, I'm sure you're all wondering about the temperatures. Under synthetic load from Ida64, the CPU had very minor throttling and settled around 80 Celsius. Which is pretty hot by normal standards, but for a case this small, I think it did a great job and will more than likely never be hit this hard in any VR game. As for the GPU, 5 minutes in for mark, it maxed out at 80 Celsius, obviously doing a lot better since it has a stock cooler and plenty of ventilation. Now for the games, we're looking to hit 90 frames per second since that's the refresh rate of our Vive. With that being said, there wasn't a single game that I threw at it that it didn't hit that mark. Job Simulator, Arizona Sunshine, Abduction, Super Hot VR, King Spray, Duck Season, I Expect You to Die, and High Noon all played at 90 frames per second with the details turned all the way up. Well, it performs great. It's the perfect VR PC. The handle makes it super easy to move it around. And the best thing about it is that it's all mobile. So if you guys enjoyed this type of video, be sure to leave a comment down below, hit that subscribe button. I'm gonna go find a place to set up. I'm traveling high.